Hello, my name is Daniel Mullaney and behind the camera today is Caitlin Yates. We are here to film a video source inspection for SciTech Process Solutions. Today we will be viewing a refurbished PSC 122M photo mask and substrate cleaning system. This system is shipping to a university and their PO number is 3005847867. So I uh, apologize for being a little bit tight on space today. Um, I'm going to try to stay out of the way of the system as much as I can. Uh, we have several other tools here that are shipping over the next couple days. Um, and so our final test area is a little tight on space, but um, we'll be able to make do for this video source inspection. So this customer is running, I'll open the lid to show you first inside the system. This customer is running five inch photo masks with a brush scrub a high pressure wash and an N2 blow off. They will also be running seven inch photo masks, four inch photo masks, four inch wafers, and six inch wafers. The four and six inch wafers work with a vacuum pull down and the photo masks all use clips to hold the mask down. Uh, all of these mask and, and wafer chucks have already been tested in our system. However, today we're gonna to be reviewing the system as well as training on the manual mode and control features. So we're gonna cut down a little time and only run the five inch mask in here. Uh, however, changing wafer or mask sizes is pretty straightforward. You have two screws located on the chuck and you'll remove these in order to swap over to a different uh, chuck for a different size or a different um, type. So what we'll do is, is we're going to go ahead and go through training on the system first and then I will go ahead and do a demonstration run um, and that will be the uh, 15 to 20 minutes that we'll need in order to train and demonstrate the use of this system. So first step when wanting to program or uh, use manual mode for the system is you're going to want to turn the bottom key here over to PLC access. So there's an obvious key sitting here, it turns to operation mode or PLC access and PLC access allows us to um, use the recipe and um, the recipe adjustments as well as the manual modes. So the way this works is you're going to press a function and then press enter. That'll either initiate that function or it will bring you into that recipe design screen or allow you to change recipe. So for example, one Enter is the command for change recipe. I'm now going to change to recipe three, for example, and press enter. The system is now sitting with recipe three. If I were to come back to operation mode and run the tool, recipe three would run. Let's say I want to change to recipe two. We again press one, two, change recipe. And now two is the selected recipe. So now let's edit recipe two. Two means edit recipe and now we're going to hit enter and now we have the, the various um, settings that we can adjust so we have a pre-wet a 15 second pre-wet that's going to be the arm moving back and forth and and um, pre-wetting the the substrate with a flush from the pump it will not be high pressure but it gets the substrate wet ahead of time change that to 10 for example 10 enter now we have dispense one. This is the amount of time for the surfactant dispense. A typical time for surfactant dispense would be around five seconds. So let's go ahead and do five. Clear to say five zero. Oh, I pressed the wrong button right there. So what we'd have to do is, is actually two. Now this is good. If you want to adjust the recipe back, what you'll have to do is you'll have to just start over. So you turn the operation mode and then you switch back to PLC mode. We're already in recipe two, so we're going to go ahead and do the recipe edit function again. Recipe edit, enter. Pre-wet, we'll do 10 seconds, enter. Dispense one, we'll do five seconds, enter. Dispense two. Now, dispense two is the amount of time for water to rinse or to flow from the brush scrub. That water is going to mix with the surfactant that has just dispensed prior to with a five second dispense. So dispense two, let's say we want to do a 20 second um, rinse and scrub there. A 60 second high pressure spray, let's adjust it to 55 for purposes of demonstration. And we'll just leave these the same. Here we have the N2 dry, that's how long the 
Um, N2 is going to be blowing out of the nozzle for drying. We then have the lamp, which is how long the heat lamp is going to be on after the N2 dry. And then we have just a spin down setting for amount of time that the wafer is just going to spin with neither on. Um, you typically aren't going to have a very long spin setting. It's mostly going to be through N2 dry and heat lamp that most of your drying comes. So that's how we program the recipe. If we were to then go back into operation mode, we'd be sitting on program two and we could then run the recipe. So we'll go back to PLC access now. What I'm going to do first is press one to select recipe and I'm going to choose one because we already have recipe one pre-programmed in here which results in a dry substrate and that's what we're going to demo with. So now we're going to show the um, the manual mode features of the controller. So what you'll do is press the outputs one at a time to to um, initiate that function. So output three is the blower. I can hear now that the system has an internal blower that is just turned on. That is for exhaust purposes. Four, vacuum pump. Now the vacuum pump is on. You can demonstrate that that is working properly. The gauge here also read up to uh, 22. Okay, now we're going to go to five. There's the heat lamp. As you can see, the heat lamp's on. I can feel the heat coming right now, so this will provide a nice dry. Okay. Item number six is the spray motor. So now we can see that the spray arm is oscillating back and forth. It should move just past center as it does, and it'll continue doing so until turned off. Okay. Oh, I just turned the heat lamp back on on accident. Number six was the spray motor off. Okay. And these are all listed in the manual as well. Item number seven is the brush motor. So now you can see that the brush is oscillating back and forth and rotating across the substrate. The brush doesn't make direct contact with the mask and substrates. It just comes uh, within a few millimeters so that the uh, friction between the brush, the, the um, solution of surfactant and DI water, and the substrate is enough scrubbing to, to uh, effectively clean the surface. Okay, so that was number seven. Just turn the brush motor off. Now we have number eight. This is the flush on. So the flush is important to, to uh, perform prior to running the system. Um, this is a really critical step. You want to flush the system, which means it's going to run DI water through the pump and through the nozzle without any high pressure in order to prime the pump. This means that we're going to fill it with water before running it. If there's any air in the pump, then that will cause a damage to your gaskets and will prevent the pump from actually being able to build up pressure. Uh, it's a catastrophic fail that will require the pump to be repaired or replaced. Okay. Okay, so I just turned off the flush there. Number nine. Here we have the nitrogen blow. I can feel that coming out of the spray nozzle appropriately right here. We have number 10, which is the vacuum chuck again. So there's two. So as you see, it says no vacuum. So this is a different output that's going to look for an actual vacuum switch to be made as well. Moving on to 12. Here we have dispense number two on. So this is going to show, this is the DI dispense out of the spray nozzle, or sorry, the uh, brush scrub. I actually missed number 11 there, so I'm going to go ahead and go back. 11. Dispense one. Dispense one is your surfactant dispense. So as we discussed before, a typical surfactant dispense might be about five seconds, which is dispense one, followed by maybe a 20 or 30 second brush scrub on dispense two. Okay, now to number 13. And 13 was the door lock. So the door lock just initiated. Uh, that's a safety protocol that will hold the lid down when the system's in operation. Okay. The last couple that we have here, we're going to go ahead and close this chamber. Oh, first I got to, there we go, open the door lock there. Okay, so now we're able to close. Now we can run the spin speeds. So we have three different spin speeds here, one, two, and three. Spin speed one is going to be your low RPM speed that's used for the brush scrub steps. We have spin speed two, which is going to be your high RPM um, speed that's going to be used at the beginning of dry. 
and then we have spin speed three, which is gonna be your still fast but medium spin speed that's going to uh, initiate when you're doing the N2 heat lamp speed. So the first one, let's run 21. Okay, so 21 is running at about 700 RPM in this circumstance. You could then adjust that speed by rotating this, um, this uh, like, um, it's kind of like a, a screw port there. It's a flathead adjustment. It's a flathead screwdriver adjustment. I'm kind of lost for words to describe it, but a flathead screwdriver turning it left or right uh, will adjust this. Uh, it's similar to a potentiometer. So um, to then move on to 22, press enter. And now this speed is uh, similar. Move to 23. Now this speed is the high RPM spin speed. So as you can see, it's up to 2000 RPM right there. So I actually may have spoke a little bit out of turn on which ones, which of these initiate during which time. Um, that can be confirmed in the manual for certain. And not only that, but uh, during operation, you can manually adjust these to adjust the spin speeds to exactly how you'd like the system to perform during your process development time period. <coughs> Do be careful when adjusting these spin speeds. A slight adjustment can make a big change in RPM and you don't want to cause any damage to the system uh, when doing uh, large adjustments. So now we'll go ahead and turn it off. 20 is turn off. So 21, first speed. 22, second speed. 23, third speed. 20 is off. So. Now we've uh, completed the uh, basic training of the system. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move back to operation mode and we're going to go ahead and start this cycle. Um, it's going to be a little difficult to see in the chamber through the camera. Um, I can see it fine here. I mean, it is a little uh, dark for my eyes as well, but I can at least see into the chamber and describe what's going on during our process. So chamber is closed. We'll go ahead and start cycle. Okay. So here, first we have a 14 second pre-wet. I can see the arm oscillating back and forth across the substrate and it is um, providing a, a low pressure uh, DI rinse. Okay, now I can see our brush scrub moving across the surface. We have a 15 second dispense one in this circumstance for demonstration and so that would be a 15 second surfactant dispense. In application, that's likely much more surfactant than is required. Okay, we now have dispense number two. The arm is re-oscillating across the substrate surface and the brush is spinning. This is a uh, DI dispense that is going to then mix with the surfactant to create a solution for the brush scrub feature. Okay, we are now moving into the high pressure and I can see the arm moving back and forth across the surface. I'm taking a look down, excuse me a little here, taking a look down here and uh, our pump is currently pumping at about 1000 RPM well, or, or 1000 PSI. I'll actually adjust this afterwards to get up to about 1500 PSI. That's more typical for substrate cleaning uh, pressure. The uh, what, one aspect you have to watch out for is if the pressure is too high, um, it can damage the masks or it can break substrates. Uh, however, that's a pretty high pressure. You're looking at more of 2,000, 2,500 um, PSI is when you have more risk uh, for that issue to happen. Okay, so we have three more seconds of the high pressure. And now we are going to move into the nitrogen dry step. So I just saw us ramp up to 2000 RPM on the system, which makes sense. That's going to be our high RPM set point. The uh, N2 blow off is initiated. I can see here from the nitrogen pressure gauge that we're looking at about 12 uh, PSI right now. And the chuck is spinning at a high RPM to do the initial drying. This first dry step is designed to sling the majority of water off the substrate surface. We're really just trying to get rid of large droplets here so that way on the next step, which is about to initiate, the heat lamp can complete the drying process. So now here we have the heat lamp on. Okay, we have 
four more seconds of this before we're going to step over to our final spin down. Here we go. So now we're doing our final spin down dry here. Um, this really just allows the, the mass to cool down a little bit. It also allows us to step down the speed a little so we're not cutting off at 2,000 RPM. Um, it's, uh, it's really more of a kind of a precautionary step that's going to assist with the drying a little bit, but it's not performing the main drying as I said. Main drying comes from N2 blow off and the N2 heater. Okay, so now we're done with our process here. I just heard, the, so after the end of process, the blower is going to run for a little longer and the lid will remain locked. You want to wait until you hear that click open. You can also just see it from here. And we'll go ahead and open the lid now. Okay. So now taking a look into the chamber, we have a dry mask. What I'm going to do is, is lift up these clips. It's okay to spin the mask in here. You're not going to cause any damage to an encoder or anything. Okay. I've now remove the mask. The mask is completely dry and clean, ready for use in your liner. Okay, we'll go ahead and load this back on. Okay, make sure it's secure. And the last step that I like to do is just show the, uh, all the different items that you'll have here on your control panel. You have a cycle start button that is used uh, when the door is closed. You actually manually close this door to then start the cycle. If the door is uh, not manually closed when you start the cycle, the vacuum will fail and uh, you'll get an interlock issue. You can hold down this button to open the lid. As you can see, it pops open automatically. You give your key switch to switch between operation mode and PLC access, as we discussed earlier. You have your emergency off button. Here you have your three uh, potentiometer adjustments for RPM speed. This is your Festo PLC controller that we reviewed earlier. Um, here we have your RPM gauge. We also have a set point for your CO2 reionizer, your nitrogen dry, and the chuck vacuum. So another item is kind of similar to making sure that you flush the system after it's been sitting for a while in order to prime the pump. It's also very important to make sure that you set your CO2 uh, reionizer level at, at correctly. Right now we have it close to 20. That's an appropriate level. You want to make sure that you have the right amount of DI pressure and CO2 reionization so that way in the mixing con container underneath that you get a proper mix. With too much water, you're not going to reionize well enough and you can cause damage to your masks. And with not enough, um, uh, with not enough DI water, you're going to have too much air in the, in the, in the mixing tank. And then you're going to put uh, CO2 through your pump, which is going to cause, again, air pockets, cause damage to the gaskets, and cause a catastrophic failure with your high pressure pump. So I'd like to uh, thank you for taking the time to view our source inspection for today. Uh, again, my name is Daniel Mullaney, and behind the camera is Caitlin Yates. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about our products, please continue to view our YouTube page or visit our website at www.scitechprocess.com, spelled S-I-T-E-K, process.com, or give us a call at 916-797-9000, and to reach me directly, dial extension 2201. Thank you so much for your time, and have a great day.